Vamsha, we can miss the description and timing of the career life, also the other areas of life. In this video, I will show you how big difference makes when we are adding the Navamsa chart to our analysis. So in the Western astrology, we have only one chart. In Vedic astrology, we have at least Rashi and Navamsha to be read. So for example, you may have very weak Rashi, but the Navamsha exaltation or strong position of the planets can totally change your chart. So if you read your chart without the Navamsha, you can commit many blunders. In our tradition, we said that Rashi, Jagana, Drekana and Navamsha are the minimum. Also the Jataka Parijata says the Rashi, Navamsha and Shastyamsa. But we are also adding a few more charts which are very important to be sure what's going on. We are adding normally the Saptamsha for children, uh, for career life we have the Shamsam, for studies D24, and for children and parents D7 and D12. And since the Venus Venus Dasha, very fruitful event, the daughter has been born, and there is a small break in the career life. But what is interesting, we also see that in that time in this period of Venus Venus, the person is having the thought, is it really a good line for the career life? Is what I'm doing really giving me satisfaction? Sometimes we have those times or the stages in life when we are reformatting the, the whole view on the life, right? So normally it is when the Lagna is activated, when it's the Rasi chart, it's the whole perspective and in this specific divisional chart, specific Vargas is for this area of life. And this person was asking, is my line of career life the best what I can use from my life? Is it fully taking the strands, potentials of my chart? And why it happened in Venus Venus? It's very easy when we are using the Adana Vimshotri, the moon is in 12, so we are using the special variation of Vimshotri, which is called the Adhana. And then we will see that this Venus is an 11 house. So like we said in this uh, lectures before, 11 house will also show the end of the projects. It's end of time for some career life stage. So when this Dasha comes, then one is having end of some stage of life or stage of career life. And here this Venus is with debilitated Mercury. So it will definitely end the career life and will show some kind of break, which will give birth to a new or rebirth of the career life. So from Rashi, we have this general what's going on. To know that this is really the break in the career life, we have to confirm from the Dashamsa. And we have this confirmation because the Venus is uh, eighth lord in that chart with Jupiter and Jupiter is the third lord. So third and eight houses in Dashamsa are ending the career life. It's giving the retirement or break or something like that. So now again, we have Taurus Lagna, two ascendant lords, Moon and Venus. So this will give one Aruda in Pisces, one Aruda in Capricorn. So this was hard for me to set because the person is scientist working for a cancer research. So there is definitely that Jupiter on the Aruda Lagna uh, because this shows the working in academical sector and the Saturn should be in 11th house from Aruda Lagna, which is showing the target, the clients, the uh, who is benefiting from your work or from what kind of projects or narrative or whatever area, where you are getting your gains. So the Saturn is showing this uh, people who are seriously ill, especially here it was retrograde and in that Vrishchika Amsha. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially this is healing because in the Navamsha, the Saturn is in the Cancer and also in the Shamsa is also in the sign of Cancer. So this is definitely something to do with healing. Uh, otherwise, the Saturn may also show the physical work, maintenance. It can also show something like export, import. So the sign can also help us to determine what element of that Saturnian group which will manifest for the specific person. So the 10th from Moon shows the where you are getting your full support. The Aruda Lag now is showing how is, where is your place in the society. So in Rasi chart, we need to see these two points. In the Navamsha, we are seeing the whole Trikona, the Atmakaraka, the 10th house. And in the Shamsa, this is the Artakona, 2nd, 6th and 10th house. So these are the basic points to determine the person's career life. Okay, guys, if you like this video so far, please click the thumbs up. You are helping me to make my videos more visible on this YouTube platform, so more people can benefit from this Jyotish Vidya. Uh, subscribe if you'd like to get similar videos, notification on your phone or computer. And uh, yeah, let's go back to this analysis.
So the choice for me was, is it in Pisces, is it in Capricorn? So the big determination was that if that would be in Capricorn, then that Venus and Mercury would be in the third from Arudu Lagna. So even if Mercury is debilitated, then this would give either career life or relationship a problem. But for this person, we see that relationship, everything is okay. And also in career life, uh, we see that there is this uh, very high position. The person got a PhD, is working in uh, US for a big project relate related to cancer research so we have both career life quite good we have the success there and also relationship is going fine so also the exalted planet on Arudu Lagna would be much better than just debilitated uh, Jupiter in the Capricorn so I assume that the Aruda in the Pisces is uh, much stronger also we see that second house from the Aruda would be the Sun Moon which may show also that the person is supported by government so it's working for government funded projects and also the moon is in the second from the Arudu Lagna which will show that uh, medical or health related projects are there. The problem, however, the challenge here would be that the 10 from Moon is that Saturn. So we have this Saturn. Okay, there is this Jupiter, but Jupiter is weak, right? So normally we should suspect that person will do some kind of Saturnian work. So now this shows how much Navamsha is important and how much more we can get from the chart if we apply also the Navamsha chart. Because first of all, the Saturn in the Navamsha is in the movable sign, which shows that the person is getting support abroad. So person was born in Poland, but is working in the US. So is having that support abroad. Saturn is showing the Western direction. So this is also uh, fitting very nicely. And Saturn is with Jupiter. And the Jupiter in the Navamsha is seventh Lord, which shows that this going uh, abroad was together with the spouse. So Jupiter is a seventh Lord exalted. And I asked, uh, is the person is the husband, the partner, also scientist, very knowledgeable. And uh, she admitted, yes, that's the fact. So we see that seven Lord is Jupiter exalted. And this has to do with that Saturn 10 from Moon. So this was the rise of the career life together with the partnership. And both are in the Cancer Rashi, which has to do uh, with the healing. So we see that this is there. And what is definitely showing that I'm getting the good grasp of this chart. The first move was in Ketu Jupiter and the second move was in the Ketu Saturn to US, right? So the career life abroad started in Ketu Jupiter also. So when that uh, going abroad happened because we have the 10th from Moon related to this uh, movable sign and also Saturn is also there. So the second move to US was also in the Ketu Saturn. So we see how these two Antardashas of Jupiter and Saturn was initiated going going abroad, going together with the spouse and working in that academical sector as a scientist, as a researcher. We see that tenth Lord from the moon. We have a moon there, but in the sign of Mercury. So I also didn't know that. I've asked if uh, you are working for the medical sector and the person agreed. And we see here that moon is in the mercurial sign and the tenth Lord Mercury is with the Rahu. Rahu shows the researcher, right? So academic, scholar, researcher, it's all that Rahu Jupiter uh, group definitely. So we see that there is a strong uh, position of the planets there. Without the Navamsha, we have only Saturn in a fixed sign. We don't know what's going on, but with the Navamsha, we have Saturn stronger in Navamsha than Rashi and it's an immovable sign. So it shows that the person's working abroad. It's working in the West direction. It's with the Jupiter, which shows that person's working in the academical sector rather as a scientist. And this is with the seventh Lord from uh, Navamsha. So this is together uh, with the spouse. We can that confirm also with the Upapada and Aruda in the Rashi, but the Navamsha also is uh, giving us very nicely its perspective. Okay guys, so as said on the Instagram, this will be the bonus, the questions and answer related to this topic. So let's see what we have here. The first question is from Sani Nandavani. Nine Lord Saturn in fifth house and Lagna Lord Mercury in the 10th house in the Navamsha. So here we could say that the three Kona are all about the abilities and the 10th house more about your uh, wealth sources. So if it's Mercury, it can give money from anything related to tradition, but also things related to writing, communication, and so on. And the Saturn in the Tricona will give you the ability. So Saturn is uh, giving a lot of skills. 
and that is also uh, giving one uh, this ability when it comes to uh, remedy people. So when it comes, for example, to medicine or astrology, Saturn is very nice to be having in Kendra because you have this ability to provide the upaya, the remedy. Uh, the next question we have by Bliss Pilgrims, what to check in D9 if there would be many career changes to stable career? So I would say that um, this depends on the yoga. If you have curse in the Rasi chart related to Mercury or if these are in Dushtana, then the person is changing the career a lot. Also, for example, if you have Mercury related to the ninth house, you also can change a career a lot, but this is based on the greed. So you believe that the grass is greener on the other side. Also in the Navamsha, probably you could check if there is some uh, con relation to nine or 11, just like eighth house is, if afflicted can, affect relationship can give divorce similarly the 9 or 11 probably uh, related to the 10th house could give some uh, problems or challenges there if you have like in this example we have uh, in the 11th house Dasha in the Rashi when the Venus started the person is trying to reformat their career life so similarly if you can see in the Navamsha if there are uh, bad yogas in the 10th house or there is some bad yogas written in 11th house then this can show a lot of changes and then you have to confirm with the Dashamsa if there are many plans in 3rd or 8th then whenever the Dasha comes the change is there so um, you need to always uh, see if in the D1 and the 9 and how in the Varga here, the Deshamsa. The next question is from Lance Robot. How to check wealth and luck in the Navamsha? So wealth is about the 10th house in the Navamsha and luck is about the Lagna in the Navamsha. The next question is Parta Majumdar, 52. Are natural malefics in the tent always bad? Isn't functional beneficence taken into account? When you read the Shastras, you will see that also malefics are providing the career life. So if there are no bad yogas related to Dushana, either from Navamsha Lagna or from the tent house, then these malefics also can uh, give you the source of earnings. So therefore Rahu can uh, give uh, uh, wealth from research or foreigners, and the Ketu can give a lot of money from hardware and things like that. So uh, everything, every yoga connected to the tent house in Navamsha wants to give you money. Now you have to check other things, how this will manifest exactly for you. The next question is from Mardini9999. Do we consider planetary aspects in the Nine and Raja Yogas? I see the Raja Yoga in the Rashi and then see how these planets then are affecting the important uh, houses or places in the Navamsha. And yes, we are taking also the Grahadrishti in the Navamsha. Then we have Slow Berlin. What is the Navamsha? Uh, so um, if you will go through my videos, I almost in each video we try to uh, give some tips how to uh, interpret the Navamsha and what is the Navamsha. So in Vedic astrology, we know that we have the main chart, Rasi chart, and but there is also the secondary, the additional chart, which is called Navamsha. And there is a bit different uh, approach to this Navamsha and different rules to interpret how this works. But this is just the additional chart, which will give you the um, secondary opinion or some additional information about your uh, more deeper and inner uh, structure of what's going on in your life. So according to Shastra, it can be interpreted independently, then it shows the marriage, but together with Rashi, it shows the Bhagya, the fortune. Also, we say the connection with the Absolute because the Atmakaraka in the Navamsha will be very important. So your relationship with your lessons, with your deep self and how this relates to the whole, be it absolute Brahman, God, however you want to call it, also is very nicely examined in the Navamsha and also in the Vimshamsa, in the specific uh, chart which is showing your spiritual practice. Uh, the next question we have from uh, Vadi Tanishk is sixth house, career house in the Navamsha too. Uh, basically, you have to see the Trikona to Navamsha Lagna. This is showing your abilities and this is more showing about your quality. And also uh, the Trikona to the 10th house is showing about the quantity. So there is the quality, quantity. So definitely the Trikona to the 10th house also will have um, important dynamics when it comes to wealth. And then we have how to see the nth job from the Navamsha from Deepak Tavorat. I think you mean the next job or I don't really understand the question here. So um, the Navamsha will show all jobs and how they are or all sources of your gains or money or wealth. And then you have to see the Deshamsa, how this will manifest exactly in your life. The next question is from Usha Shastri, astro combination for medical profession. So uh, Mercury is the main one and Mercury expected by Moon. This is the medicine in the moon 
type. So this could be Ayurveda or naturopathy, anything related to natural medicine. So Mercury and Moon is for this natural medicine. So if you have these yogas in the important points related to career life, these important points were also set in this uh, exact video, then you will be able to uh, say if you have um, success in this field. Uh, the next question is from Kumar C136. What is the effect if Lagna Lord Sun is placed in the ninth house in Aries? with Mars and Saturn. So Sun is giving the musical ability. Uh, this is basically the Gita, which is showing either the feeling of the rhythm, also good for reading. The Mars, many, normally the technical, but also can give cooking, can give yoga, and the, the security. A uh, person may like to study martial arts or be very good at logic. So Mars has a lot of uh, things. It's very uh, Structurized ballot points, technical, and so on. And we have the Saturn is giving normally a person who may have a stage right uh, in the beginning years. So this is normally Saturn, the Tricona. We know that this is rectified when that stage right is there, but also have a lot of uh, good abilities which were mentioned before. We have a question from Prashasti which lords and houses to consider while reading Navamsha for Greed? Uh, basically, as I said, the ability, there is a lot to this. So there is uh, levels to the Navamsha. We are learning a lot in this Jaimini course. So this basic approach is that the Navamsha Trikona is showing your abilities and the 10th house is showing your uh, wealth. The role of Yoga Karaka and Kendra and Navamsha impacting career. I use that more in the Rasi chart and I can take them this to the Navamsha. Then we have a lot of questions from Les CD. Let's see what we have here. Can someone do career of Graha, which is Ucha in Navamsha, and avoid work related to Nicha Graha in Navamsha? Uh, I don't know if I understand this correctly. Yeah, the Ucha will bring a lot of uh, success. The Nicha can bring a lot of wealth, but maybe problem with ideals or success. What does the 10th Lord of the Nine do? How should study? This is just uh, another yoga related to 10th house. So this can bring you your wealth. Also, this can probably control the whole root, the whole seed of uh, wealth. Therefore, we can take this Graha. I cannot say a lot here. <laughs> Those Vargatam Graha decided the career path. The Vargatam basically have effects on your Lagna. So this is related to your uh, image, your health, and your uh, preferences also in uh, mothers of yourself, in relationship, and so on. This is also connection to the Rishi. So if this has connection to career path, then this fame then is connected to the career path. So Vargotam is like um, Graha on your Lagna, basically. The next question, how 10th Lord of Diwan should be studied in Navamsha? Example, it shows the status. Example, D1 Cancer, Lagna Lord, and Mars in D9. Mm. Yeah, so this is uh, said by the tradition that it shows the status of the person. How to connect D1 and D9 to know about career life? Yeah, so for example, a very standard point is that you are taking all the plants which are aspecting the Lagna uh, or have some connection to the Lagna and Aruda Lagna in the Rasi chart, and then you may take these plants to the uh, Navamsha chart and see if they are in Trikona or nicely placed, then you can have uh, only few or sometimes one Graha and this graha often will show uh, the common common thing between uh, what you uh, see yourself doing, what you can be known from, and also what you are able for. So this is one technique, one approach. There are more, but this was the standard approach, I believe, in Crooks of Vedic Astrology or in the basic or young uh, years of this um, uh, Vedic forum, Santaji was giving this uh, principle. Uh, why we study the 9 for career? We study the 10 for career, right? Because we need to see where is something big. The Navamsha is showing the luck. Where is our luck coming? So the Dashamsa, it's hard to figure out the quality of the Dashamsa. So this quality, what is big, what is small, where is the problem? Where is the big fortune coming? You can take that from the Navamsha. So sometimes uh, in the Dashamsa, this can be a planet which you would normally not take without the Navamsha. So you need that Rashi and the Navamsha to know, as I said, if, if is something happening, what is the color? And then in the Dashamsa, this will tell you how this is manifest. Is it the business? Is it employment? Is it the contract job? Is it the freelance, right? And so on. Uh, what if 10th house of the nine is empty? Then you will take the Lord and the aspects on the 10th house. Uh, leadership role from the Navamsha, so Sun and Mars, especially the Mars is a Netra, Mars is a leader, so it has to be strong, nicely placed in the Navamsha. 
And the last question from Magic uh, Snow in. Tenth Lord Jupiter in the third house in Leo in Malana Karakastana. So we are taking the Malana Karakastana in the Navamsha too. So this may cause, there are many, many. Tenth Lord in the third house can be very good. For example, Sanjayji has this combination. Tenth Lord Sun in the third house in the Navamsha. So there is something good, something bad about this uh, combination, but for Jupiter, the Marana Karakastana is in a special. So that's it. That would be my answers for your question as a bonus to this video. Okay, guys, so that's gonna be it for today. It's very short, but hopefully this will add to your Jyotish arsenal. If you'd like me to help you analyze your chart, the Rashi, Navamsha, in the matters of health, career life, relationship, what the position of your planet means, what yogas you have in the Rashi and Navamsha, and in which period they will manifest to analyze the dashas and to give you remedies for main challenges in your chart, just hit me up in the email below and we will schedule a consultation for you. If you like this video, uh, please don't forget to click the thumbs up, uh, subscribe for more and see you in the next one.